Welcome back to the Higher Grounds Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today on the podcast, we're going to pick up with Brother Michael and Brother Stephen from where we left off on last week. Last week, we were dealing with the doctrine of repentance and what it is biblically. So today, we will continue that thought. You stay tuned for the Higher Grounds Podcast. Welcome back to the Higher Grounds Podcast. Thank you for joining uh, the crew today. We appreciate you coming by. Uh, today we're going to pick up where we left off on last week, dealing with the uh, second part on the series on repentance, biblical repentance. We're going to be talking about that today, looking into it a little more in depth. Uh, but uh, it's good to have my co-hosts with me, uh, my partners in crime, Brother Stephen Aldridge. How is it down in the upstate? It is down the, in the up. Down in the upstate. I yes. let my mind process that for because we're a in second. North Carolina, yeah. so it's down in the upstate. I kind of started in one, dipped down, but yeah, it's it's going good. It's going good. It's a little bit of uh, the logistics are a little different as far as getting here to shoot podcasts, but I'm glad to be able to be here today and and uh, to do that and get back on air with you. And so uh, things busy? are going good, good and busy. Yes, sir. Always, always busy. I, I have been asked a couple of times, you know, what are you doing with your free time now that you're not you're not pastoring? Yeah. And of course, which I laugh and, and invite yeah. them to come and go with us for a day <laughs> yeah. or so. Yeah. And, and uh, so there's always plenty yeah. to do. Around well, now that you're off church discipline, you're able to do now a lot more. I'm off more. church discipline. <laughs> yeah. And they get to, uh, yeah, do that. <laughs> are you still under me, watch uh, care, or they cut you loose? They have cut me loose. Good. Yeah, good, um, good. yeah, they, they've cut me loose, and so going well. Praise God, <laughs> Amen. What about it, Mikhail? Well, it's good to be back in studio. Good to be back with uh, the crew, Amen. and uh, here we are. You know, 2020 has already caught traction, and uh, if we ain't careful, it'll get by us in a hurry. Hey, I, dude, we can't do this much longer. I rode by. I was on 601 North mm -hmm. uh, last evening, and I rode by a house, and they had a great big placard. You'll see this, Matthew. When you go to to church this uh, Wednesday, um, they had a great big placard in the yard, and it said "Twenty Twenty Four Tribulation." Ah, wow. really? We we don't have long. We <laughs> we going to get out of here, baby. <laughs> predictions abound. <laughs> yes, predictions. Sir. yes, sir. I can't Absolutely. wait. Speaking of predictions, some people still got all their cans of green beans from two thousand. <laughs> yeah, Y two K. Yeah. Eat up all your That's rice right. and beans yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, so I've, I've got some folks. I've got some folks at the church. I don't think their house will ever burn down because they got like eleven thousand gallons of water. Yeah. In milk jugs underneath their house. Now it, it'll burn down a ways, but it it won't burn from the ground up. That's how weird. I, I, I remember that when the when it was two thousand and it didn't been preached on, predicted, and everything else. And so I was like, I didn't happen. But then when it, when the clock got ready to strike, I was kind of like, oh, what's going to happen? You know, like, <laughs> don't, need to, don't need to like jump to start the rap. I don't know. But, Let yeah. me tell you the funny. This is funny right here. And I was at. I was at uh, in the Upstate that night. Actually, I was at uh, Taylor's yeah. at the Pleasant View Baptist Church, and Brother Larry Rains was uh, was moderating a winter camp meeting. And you know how he says things in his inimitable way. He said, uh, nah, "I know some y'all are worried about the Y two K." He said, "If you're worried about it that bad, y'all just go home with me when the service is over." We'll kill all my cows, eat a good steak, burn the house down on us, and go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't concerned. Was he, he wasn't concerned he at wasn't all. Concerned. That's yeah. a Larry Rains quote. Yeah, that was, that's the only way he could say that. Yeah, yeah. it was. You just have to know, Brother <laughs> Rains. Hey, shout out to this company in Dahlonega, Georgia, B Cause Coffee. Mm -hmm. You talking about good coffee? B Cause Coffee. I was down preaching for. Uh, well, you were. I think you were down there. Were you down there in October for Brother Biddy's meeting? Yes, I preached well, for him that week. Right. And so I was down there preaching. Mm -hmm. And did he give you any B-Calls coffee? I don't think that he did. Uh, so that means if he sees the podcast and maybe... Uh, it's time to get... It's time to get me some B-Calls coffee. Yes. Hey. And, yeah. uh, you know, he, he says that you're a sensitive individual. So that might have been why he didn't get it for that you. That could have been it. He I might he might would have, like, yeah. you know, been afraid that I would have been... I don't know why he would feel that way or why he would say I was sensitive, but... You, you know, know what I call him? What's that? Itty. Itty. Itty bitty. Itty bitty. <laughs> He's not itty bitty He's at all. Itty -bitty. He's, He's a big fella. That's Mark's right. A big guy. That's a monster of a man. Yes, right sir. There. 
But he's kind, very kind. Fella. Soft guy, yeah, yeah. gentle. Soft. <laughs> Sorry. He, uh, speaking of Brother Biddy, like, he has like the biggest hands. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, mm-hmm. he does. Like sausages on the end of his. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, that, yeah. I don't want to make yeah. fun of him. I don't want him to hit Great family. Hands. Great church, man. We enjoyed our time down there with yeah. them. Yeah, yes, good sir. people. Yeah. Good people. Beautiful area. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. Isn't it great? Did yeah. you hear Ashland just got saved? I heard about Isn't that. Isn't that blessing? It's a blessing. Amen. That's amazing. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we're back in the Word of God today. Yes. And we're going to be talking about uh, repentance. Last week we were dealing with the subject of repentance and the misnomers about it in regard to uh, different... Um, uh, beliefs, uh, doctrinal beliefs in Scripture, and we must understand that no Scripture is, is of any private interpretation. So just because something does not fit with your soteriological view on salvation, then you, you just can't rest, that's the biblical word, you can't rest the Scriptures to twist them to make them say what you want them to say to fit your, your belief right. system or your doctrine. And so what we're trying to get across to you is that um, we're, we're giving, we're pulling verses, uh, but we're not damaging context. We're trying to keep them within the context. Brother Michael will cover some of this in a little bit um, when Paul is talking to Timothy. But we want us to understand that repentance is essential for salvation. Repentance is not a work. That's one of the statements I've heard. Yes. That repentance is a work for salvation. If you if you are repenting, then you're working for salvation. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the same argument could be made about your prayer. If if you're praying for salvation, then your prayer becomes a work. So it's a it's a non-ending argument that never gets you anywhere. It's mm-hmm. circular. And it's as we used the illustration last week up a hamster on a wheel. And so, Brother Stephen, anything new that you want to give to us in regard to the subject of repentance as I I look up a verse of Scripture I do. I was looking at the seven churches in Asia Minor. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, you need to... Uh, He told these churches to repent. He kept repeating that. That's a a common theme that's given through these. And so he he showed up on the scene of these churches, and he was saying, there are some things you need to turn from, and once again, and to turn to. The hope of the church was not based on what was going out of the church, though that is important. He said, if you're going to have revival, if you're going to be a church that pleased me, if you're going to keep the Spirit of God at the church that I've placed there, Mm -hmm. if you're going to keep that angel, that pastor there, He said, it is depending on whether or not you repent. And uh, I think that's a forgotten part. Not only is it left out a lot of salvation preaching, but it's also left out of revival preaching. So what about a revival? What you know? I, I know our church in, in Pastor and even um, in you men can testify to this. Some of the greatest revivals start when people start repenting. Yeah. Oh, no doubt about that. And they yeah. get clean. And so Confess your faults one to another, pray one for another that you exactly may be healed. Right. When people begin to do that, God begins to to do some great great work. And I'm gonna I'm gonna quote from a from a Pentecostal, um, and this this Pentecostal was um, Frank Bartleman, yeah. um, and we definitely would not um, be where he is on. Uh, on the on sal- on salvation even mm-hmm. um, and definitely on the gifts spiritual gifts, but he made a statement uh, in the Azusa Street revival. And I read behind everybody and I chew and spit. So oh, yeah. you, you know I'm not saying this guy's right, but he made a statement that is 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 true. Mm-hmm. He said the height. The height of your revival will be dependent upon the depth of your repentance. Oh, wow. Mm. That's, wow. And that's a good statement. I believe that. That's a good statement. Mm-hmm. When a man says, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, you better expect God's going to find a wicked way in you. Yeah, absolutely. And his in the intention of the psalmist when he said that, uh, in Psalm 19, I believe it was, he said, uh, he said the intent of that psalmist was, I'm going to repent. I'm going to get it right. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is you show me, I'm mm-hmm. going to get it right. Yep. And, you know, when, when you draw nigh to God and God draws nigh to you, the expectation is that you cleanse your hands. Something that's something you do. Yep. You purify your heart. That's something you do. And the closer you get to God, the more light he shines on who you are. Yes. And the more you're going to be getting right. Yeah. Sure. You can see that in the life of Isaiah. Yeah. I mean, whenever he, the closer he got to God, oh, yeah. the, the woes t- yeah. turned from outward to inward. Oh, yes. And yes. Uh, just because he began to see himself in the light of God's holiness. And yeah. then that's whenever he had the, you know, the statement where he says, you know, what was me? I, yeah. I'm undone. Right. Uh, you know. And his um, king had to die before that happened. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
to to add just a little bit to what Brother Steve was talking about, you know, last last episode we talked about well, we defined repentance, yes. the change of mind. And, and, and we clarified it saying there's no way you can have change of mind, not have change of actions or right. behavior, whatever. Right. In, in, the, in the churches of Revelation where the Lord called for repentance, he had pointed out a doctrinal error or a behavioral practice that he was displeased with. And the call for repentance, there was a call for change, not right. just the way you thought about it, but in your behavior and actions. And I think that's important when you talk about this issue or subject of repentance is that it's got, it's more than just something that happens. It starts here, yeah. but it ends up here in yes. your hands. It's yes. something, it changes yes. something about uh, in your life. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's very important because until that change has come about, repentance has not taken place. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, and just, just to touch on something we, we were dealing with last week that repentance was, you know, for an Old Testament economy, Okay, it's for an Old Testament economy, and it was not it was for the Jew. It wasn't for the Gentile. It wasn't for the Greek. The, we we already established scripturally in Acts twenty that that, that isn't true. Right. Um, that um, you know it's it's for the Jew and for the Greek. But but in Revelation chapter number two, you've got uh, verse number five, I think, verse yep. number sixteen, verse twenty one, where he 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 keeps talking about each church repenting, each yep. church repenting, and he goes all the way to chapter number three. Um, you know, remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. He's talking to the church there. Revelation 3.19, yep. again, as many as I love, I rebuke and be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay? Now, to, to and we're not going to deal with this today, but our ultra-dispensational brethren or hyper-dispensational brethren, they're, they're, they're different, but they believe that the book of Hebrews all the way to the book of the Revelation is for, um, is for saints in the tribulation period, period. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem with that is the present perfect tense verbs, which we'll deal with early, uh, later mm. in a different podcast. But in Revelation chapter number two and chapter number three, he's writing to churches that exist. Uh-huh. He is writing in regard to present and past verbs, yep. verb tenses. And so these are real people with real problems that really needed to repent. Exactly. Right. And these True. are Jewish people. Uh, these yes, are sir. Gentile people. Yes, sir. You need, you need to repent. You need to get yep. things right with God. So it's it's current. Repentance is cur- a current doctrine for the dispensation yes. which we live in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. One thing we wanted to talk about or deal with in this episode, too, is, is the preacher's perspective in his preaching and ministering to his flock mm-hmm. with the subject of repentance in mind. It is, it is so tempting sometimes as a pastor. God, God puts you in a place. He gives you a heart for the people. Right. And he lets you see things. Yeah. And it, it can become a snare to a young man in ministry especially. As you see things in the lives of the people you pastor, to have a desire, if, if repentance is needed, you want to see it take place. You know right. it's advantageous for them as an individual and right. corporately for your church. And there's a temptation to just to just go at something with, with full force and, and and push some more toward repentance. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but but a man of God has got to know his role sure. that he plays in that. And in Second Timothy chapter two, the apostle Paul gave some instruction to the young Let's look at it. young man that he was mentoring there. In Second Timothy chapter two, I, I want to start reading in verse number twenty four. And here's what Paul's instruction was to that young pastor in training about handling error in people's lives in regard to repentance. Here's what he says in verse 24. He tells Timothy, he says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, meaning be contentious about. Right. Must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient. May I say this? When you see error as a young man in ministry or even as an older man, uh, God calls for us, first of all, to not get contentious. Yep. We right. want to be gentle toward the people we pastor. We want to be able to teach them the truth of God's Word, and we have to be patient. Right. If we're not patient, if we try to get ahead of God, we're going to cause more trouble and harm than we're ever going to produce good. Okay? He says this, In meekness, instructing those that oppose himself, if God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive, captive by, by him at his will. will. For ye, I've noticed something uh, in ministry that is there's such a temptation there is that we want to see our folks get right with God, and we should. Mm-hmm. And we want to, because we know how it impacts or affects the church corporately. Yeah. But if you're not careful, you'll get into a thing to where you know, you feel like it reflects on you. Yeah. The kind of people and how they're living that you're pastoring. Right. In reality, that. That that can be a measuring stick, but no, it's not always right. the, the truth. Right. Moses was a man after God's heart. He loved the Lord. He wanted to see his folks get to Canaan. They was you know leading at the time. He done everything God asked him to do to get them there, and he was unsuccessful. Was that his fault? 
No, I don't yeah, believe it was. Sure. I believe that he was just pastoring a group of people that uh, that, that weren't going any farther than they were going to go. And, oh, by the way, it, that, that Joshua didn't take that group in. No, no, he did not. They all died, and he took their children in. Yes, right. So it wasn't a lack of leadership problems. And we got to be careful as pastors that we don't feel like, oh, man, you know, i, I got to move this crowd forward. And you start imposing your will. You start mm-hmm. trying to play the role of the Holy Spirit. Right. Bottom line is this. We give the truth. We teach properly. We preach. we got to be patient. We got to be long suffering. We got to be gentle. Yep. And ultimately, the decision to recover oneself from the snare of the devil comes whenever God grants repentance to that person. Yes. Yeah. They accept what they've heard. Their mind changes, and they change their course of action. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's it has to be acted upon by the volition yeah. of their own will. Absolutely. In 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 regard to repentance, yeah. most often when we're dealing with the subject of repentance, it seems like the focus is on salvation. Let's get, you know, you need to sure. repent and believe, repent and believe, repent and believe, and that is true. But but every time the word repentance is used in the New Testament, it's not dealing um, with the subject of soul salvation. Matter of fact, the context of 2 Timothy chapter number 2 is dealing with um, vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. Mm-hmm. And he's talking, he, you know, he starts off by talking about a strong man in verse 1, a sharing man in verse 2, a solid man in verse 3, a selfless man in verse 4. And as he wor- works his way through dealing with the subject of manhood or being a human being, one of the things he talks about is being a sanctified man. Mm-hmm. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, verse number 19, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Talking about sanctifying oneself. And then he talks about there being a house of vessels, vessels of gold and silver, wood and earth, some to honor, some dishonor. And as soon as he gets done dealing with that, that vessel of honor, he immediately goes into verse number 20. Two, dealing with Timothy about fleeing youthful lust. In other words, here's something that will make you a vessel of dishonor. In other words, he takes one of the most salacious of sins and says, son, this kind of sin, which is the worst of all kinds, you know, in, you, you know what I'm saying relative to the scripture, he is saying, this is this is this is going to get you in a mess. And then not only does he say that, but then he gets down to verse number twenty three to deal with the lesser of sins, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing they do gender strife. Strife is a whole lot less of sin than sexual mis- misconduct. But they're both things that are going to need to be repented of. Right. Mm-hmm. Then he moves in to talk about repentance. So in this text, repentance here is not for a lost man. Yep. It's for saving. That's exactly right. It's for saving. That's exactly right. Yes, sir, brother. And how many how many people have you dealt with? But not just people. I mean, because you deal with you talk a lot of pastors. You're a pastor's pastor, and a lot of men. How many men do you find are they they've gotten so frustrated with their flock or other people because they won't repent? That now, I guess the way what I'm saying is, don't have to repent because others won't repent and mm-hmm. you get yourself in bad shape, and you know they won't do right or they won't listen to me, and then next thing you know, you find yourself discouraged and down and out, and and even make some bad decisions just because somebody else. Would. Well, the late Dr. James Crumpton said it this way. He said, um, you know, he said a lot of times for a preacher. He gets the devil in him while he's trying to get the devil out of everybody else. It's <laughs> yeah, the devil yes. in the whole mess. That's right. Yeah. And a man of God can do nothing. You, you young preachers, listen to Brother Andy. Mm-hmm. You, you can do nothing but find the mind of God and preach it to your people. Yeah. You cannot force them to change. Yes. Yeah. Now, a lot of you are trying to run to your illustration book and try to find some real terrible illustration about somebody dying, yeah. you know, because they didn't listen to the preaching. That ain't going to do anything. Right. You know, that's terrible English, but it's not going to do a thing. Right. You're going to have to let the Word of God do its work in them. And then when the Word of God does its work in them, then it's up to them by the act of their will whether they're going to act upon what God's Word is doing in their life. One of the greatest lessons, I think, that can be learned is when you watch how that over time... Um, Moses' disappointment with the with the nation of Israel, not wanting to go where God had for them to go, it led to his frustration. Ultimately, cost him. Yes, I, I, I yeah. believe Moses would have got into Canaan with the next generation, right, right. but it drove him to a breaking point. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, I think every pastor that's done it any length of time has had to sit down with himself and have the conversation. No doubt. Yes. Hey, look, you know, understand your role, stay in your lane, 
Do what you're asked to do by the Lord. Yeah. Right. And and the result part of this thing is going to have to be set at the judgment seat, and, and God keeps a good, accurate record. Yeah. He does. Brother Finney just said this Sunday, he just he was preaching, and he was preaching along these very lines, and he was talking about getting in that kind of shape, just, just sick of people or frustrated. Mm-hmm. And I know we're, we're talking about repentance or because they wouldn't. And he said, you have to be careful because that can cost a man 10 to 20 years in his ministry. Oh, wow. Oh, it can. Just, it, a, how, it's a wasted how, word, time. A wa- exactly. Yes. A wasted time, or even if he makes a bad mistake, it could cost him 10 And, you know, I, I think it was Abraham Lincoln that made this statement years ago. He said, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. That's oh. right. So as you're investing week after week into that body, it's sometimes it's a process where, where God confronts someone over a position they're taking or a, a belief they have. And it may be a year to your process of, of your voice and other voices coming to different angles. I heard a lady one time talking about how that her pastor had preached a certain truth time and time and time again. Yep. And, and, and she got to the place where she was kind of cold to it after a while, wasn't cooperating, heard it from another voice. And it's almost like God used that second yep. witness to drive it home. She got right about it. Uh, walked on into victory in her life, yeah. and I thought, man, what an example for the pastor. Just not get frustrated. Keep doing right. your job right. and mm-hmm. preaching the word and, and let repentance take its run its course in someone's life. Well, if you don't, you will miss the, the blessings of God on your own calling. Yeah. Yes. And that's what Moses missed out on. Miss, Moses missed out on the blessings, and you have to understand, We a lot of times we're ministering to younger pastors, younger preachers, but and young people. But remember this, Moses' failure happened late in life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're never too late to mess up That's in life. Right. And word. we may have a little more sense about us the older we get, but people can drive you to do some things you wish you hadn't have done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Moses was at a place where he couldn't undo what he did. And, uh, you know, re- repentance, God grants it through his word. I believe that. And let, let me explain this to you. The Bible said, godly sorrow, we talked about this last week, godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to be repented of, the sorrow of the world worketh death. And in other words, God is actively involved in a man's repentance. Mm -hmm. We're dead in our trespasses and sins as human beings. That's a part of the Adamic nature. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be a quickening, an awakening, and you hath he quickened Mm -hmm. who were dead in trespasses and sins. We, We don't come to salvation, nor do we come to sanctification or being right with God through pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps and going at at this thing with an analytical understanding right. of God and God's God's doctrine and his word there has to be a divine influence of God upon the heart in every aspect of salvation and in every aspect of living for God and this verse of scripture that you quoted brother Michael a while ago said um, in Second Timothy chapter number two, it said, uh, "In meekness, instructing uh, those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will grant them repentance uh, to or give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth." In other words, this was something God gave. Mm-hmm. Repentance was not something they just woke up with one day and said, "I don't think I'll change." In other words. Um, they, they had a divine influence of God on their heart to repent. Now, in the book of Acts, chapter number 5, that same thing happens again. Yeah. Um, or happened previous to this. Uh, let me give you that um, repentance. Let me give you that reference of Ken. Uh, this is in the book of Acts, chapter number 5, mm-hmm. and verse number 31. The Bible said, Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. This is Paul preaching uh, to the Jews, or excuse me, Peter preaching to the Jews. He said to be a prince and a savior, talking about Jesus, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. So just as much as all of us would say that God gives us forgiveness of our sins, he is saying that he gives to them repentance. It's followed up again in the book of uh, Acts chapter number, uh, what is it, Acts chapter number 11 maybe, where the Bible said this after Cornelius got saved. Peter went and preached to Cornelius in Acts 10, and then he comes back and reports that to the Jewish congregation, and this is what they said in Acts 11, 18. They said when they heard these things, talking about Cornelius and the Gentile getting saved, they held their peace, glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles 
granted repentance sure. unto life. So you have some references where God is giving or granting repentance mm-hmm. to those that need to be saved, and God is giving and granting repentance to those who need to get right. Here's the beautiful thing about that. There is a there is a system or process that takes place every time. The Word of God is always given. Yep. So man's got to hear the word, or as he hears the word, that's where it comes from. That's exactly right. Then, then as God illuminates that man's mind to where he's at, he now has an opportunity right. to agree with God and, and and let repentance take place and change his course. Well, of it's action. just like faith. So then, faith cometh yes by hearing yep. and hearing by, by what the hearing the hearing of the word of God. And so it is the word of God which produces the repentance in the heart of the man who is darkened and needs to get right with Absolutely. God. Absolutely. And if, if the word of God God does it God's not working through divine impressions on the on the spirit. He's working through what the word of God does in the spirit and soul of the man. Absolutely. Sure. Which, which which tells us this any opportunity a child of God has to hear the word. Yeah. Be there. Yes. Because there may be an issue God exposes yes. that yep. you get right about yes. and repent that leads to a season of growth in your life and blessing that you can't afford to miss. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Hey, we've wound this thing down. Any closing comments? Well, just on ever, you know, he talked about preaching, and, and on the last of that, I just say that be careful not to get to where you are good at, at hearing preaching. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah, you got the old spiritual hearing. shovel. Yeah, and you just, yeah. <laughs> right over the shoulder. True. Yeah, I'm Very not worried true. about those who ride the all. Amen. Getting things no, right. sir. Hey, just just let God work His will in you through His Word and the light of it. The entrance of Thy words giveth light, Amen. giveth understanding in the simple. Absolutely. And we're all simple minded when it comes to the things of God. Amen. From the Higher Grounds Podcast, you keep pressing on the upward way. Mm-hmm.